Hey, we're back to this pool job, this rock surround that's being supported with Fox blocks and being built by specialty projects. Now, I didn't have a whole lot of time in between before concrete while they were building. We're just so busy in the ICF world right now, we're just scrambling to keep up with sales. But I did get out to do this one clip where I showed up on site for about a half hour. And I just ran with the video and, and did this one wall. So just take a look at this and you'll see how we did that curved wall with the gaps that are open and things like that. So just take a quick look at this and then we'll get back to doing concrete. Okay, here's just some clips on how we're doing some of this work. Nothing is leveled. There's no level at all with this. This is a four inch compact. We just use cutoffs here of um, foam and we just put it behind the web and then when we place concrete, that's gonna hold it all. And we could cut this off after, but in reality, with, with Randy's rock work, he'll just build around that. He can, he can sculpt it a little bit. And you can see here, we just went wild with a reciprocating saw. Got some clips hanging out there that we may need or may not. Um, we've got a little bit of rebar going on just for tying it, but we're using helix in this wall. So really, you're not gonna need a whole lot You can see the curve happening here. And you can see here the cuts to help create the curve. Down in the bottom, we have the spray foam that we put in, that high expansion stuff. This here, once we got the curve exactly where we want it, we'll just fill that up with spray foam. Life will be good. And here on the, these T walls, we just put a piece of rebar inside, some tie wire, did that on every row, and we will also kick it off. Okay, you like that with that long sweeping curve and those big gaps, some of them an inch and a quarter wide, we filled them up with spray foam and we are gonna strap them. And you'll notice when we're placing concrete that I, I'm watching their place concrete and I'm saying, why didn't you put straps on there? And they figured, well, the spray foam will hold it. And you know what, it did. And they, they shoved an inch and a quarter vibrator in that, or it could have been an inch and a half vibrator and it worked just fine. Well. After that past video, I went back to my office because we had a lot of stuff going on. And I didn't get back there until the day of concrete. And the day of concrete, I got early, got there early. I did the full walk around. And just to look at the whole job before they place concrete into it to make sure that everything is right. And I took my little DJI Osmo. This is the most fantastic little camera. This is what I've used for years and years. It's probably six, seven years old now probably, I think, seven years old now. But it is a little camera on a gimbal, and this camera is the high-end DJI camera they use on their, their expensive drones. 4K video, and it's stable. It just follows me everywhere. It's beautiful. And I did the full walk around. All the settings were right. It's all recording. I got the, my mic set up, and in the end, none of the footage was usable. And I don't know what happened. I've got a great filter on it, and for some reason, for the first time in seven years, none of this footage was good. So I'm, I gotta look into that and find out why. But take a look at this video. You'll see me walking around with this thing, wondering what it is. Well, that's what it is. And I'm so sorry, the footage didn't work with this, but you'll still see the other footage, and we'll see what we can catch during concrete placement. But first, watch this, and then we'll get into concrete placement. Hey, I'm on site again for specialty projects with Randy Clausen and his crew. And we're doing this Fox Box job. Today's concrete day. So I've got my little Osmo here. I'm going to run around the job and show you what's happening and get, see if we're ready for concrete. And this is, this is the time. It's a couple hours before the concrete's going to arrive. So this is the time when we just look everything over and make sure they buttoned everything up. These guys work. Friday, Saturday, I was not here. They worked those days getting things prepared. And today I'm just doing a run around to see how they're doing. So let's do that. I am just running around this part here. I have my time-lapse camera right there. I don't know how this Osmo is gonna work, we'll see. But this is a set of stairs they're gonna do going up into this whole thing. This wall right here 
right beside on my right hand side here is all eight inch and the rest of this is all four inch and it's sitting on top of helical piles that they've done and they run up these stairs and that brings them to the top of the cave. This here area is all going to be five inch concrete deck and they're going to walk around here. This part here is the start of a waterfall and that's going to flow down and out over the pool. And this here wall, which is looks like nine foot four high, looks down into a little grotto area they're going to have. And this here is the slide. They're going to have a little roof over top of this and they'll slide down into the pool. So that is what's happening today. You can see this eight inch wall in the background here. I'll just jump down. Okay, seeing as my little drone didn't work, I didn't get that video footage that I talked about. So I'm going to show some photos here. Now this is the stairway. This is looking at this curved stairway. It curves differently. Every step's a different size. It's the same height all the way up, but they're different widths and it changes shape going up. And they just use two by eights for their cross members to support that concrete. And you can see in this next photo, it's a little bit closer up. There's holes coming through the Fox blocks to allow that concrete to flow through and tie all those stairs together. So it'll all be monolithic. It'll all be poured at the same time. And with a hybrid of rebar and helix, it'll all hold together just fine. There's also cross walls underneath. So there's a ton of support. And if we go up those stairs, we'll be standing on the deck up top. And looking down in this photo, you're looking down at the waterfall deck. And both decks are, are pretty well the same. They're five inch thick concrete and they've got a hybrid of rebar and helix that are gonna be used. And again, with these decks, you'll see holes in the side of the Fox blocks so that all the concrete in the walls and the floors all tie themselves together. So it's all one big unit when we get to pour it. Now what's gonna support all this weight up on top? Well, you also have to allow for, well, the weight of the concrete as well as a whole bunch of workers up on top. For some reason, they all think they have to go stand up on top during concrete. So you're gonna have maybe eight guys standing up there. You never know, right? So you have to allow for that. So let's go down into the cave below. And this is what it looks like. They just put a bunch of lumber in there and, and supports. And down on the bottom, they actually put um, dunnage, some two by tens down on the ground and then support down on that, just like a footing. So that nothing's gonna sink. It's all gonna hold itself up really well. And it really did during concrete. So that's the cave. Now, if we go to the outside, you're gonna see this big curved wall. Now we filled these gaps up and some of them were an inch and a quarter wide and we used a high expansion spray foam. Don't go and get window and door spray foam. That does not work. That rarely works for anything other than windows and doors because it's an insulation, not a glue. So if you get a high expansion polyurethane spray foam, it's gonna work just fine. Doesn't matter what the brand is. I like using great stuff. The black cans work really well. And you can use any other brand. There's lots of really good brands out there. And this is all we did. We didn't do any strapping or anything, pour concrete, put a vibrator in there, and it all held together quite well. Now, we also had a whole bunch of um, other strapping going on on the inside with all of that in the cave, all that you saw, that's actually holding things together as well. So you gotta remember that. So now, what about all the T walls? There were a lot of T-walls in this, and all the T-walls went in different directions too. It wasn't just a 90 degree T. They, they were oddball T's as well. Well, this is how we did that. We take a piece of tie wire, we loop it through the plastic ties and around a piece of rebar. That piece of rebar is gonna come up against the side of the block, and it's gonna help tie everything together. So we wrap that up, and we take a screw or a nail, and we, we spin that around, and it tightens things up. We did one of those on each row of block. So every 16 inches, we have one like that. And that's all we did, nothing else. Now, again, you gotta remember, we have all that strapping on the inside, that is helping a lot. So if you do a job that's just got a, a basic T wall going up, you could do it this way quite easily, but you gotta put a little bit of extra forming against it, maybe some strapping on the outside just to hold it because we had that on the inside that you didn't see. You may need it on the outside on a typical job, but on this job, it held just fine. All of them held well. So let's move on to placing concrete. Okay, concrete just arrived. 
We've been buttoning this thing up all morning. I've been walking around taking pictures and videos and things, but these guys are ready. I think it's going to work really well. And uh, as they pour concrete, I'll shoot some video showing the concrete going in, why we're pouring at certain heights at certain spots and get a successful pour. It'll be an easy pour, actually. It's going to be two trucks of concrete. I think it is 15 meters of concrete which is a whole bunch of yards. I don't know how many yards that is, probably 17, 18 yards of concrete. Uh, the first load's gonna fill up half of the job, obviously, and the second load, the other half. On the first load, we added 1% calcium. We're still cool here, and we wanna actually get that thing reacting a little bit quicker. It'll stiffen up a little bit quicker and help that heat in the wall to climb up in this cool weather. Um, I know these guys are in t-shirts right now, but this is Canada, and it is right now oh about 10 degrees celsius and at night it's going to the freezing mark 10 degrees celsius is going to be i don't even know what that is 50 degrees 45 50 degrees fahrenheit so that's where we're at and um, i think it's going to be a very casual pour actually It's working really well. It's blowing really good. We got stuff to do, man. Apparently the pump operator wants to leave in a half hour. So you can see they're using an inch and a half vibrator and shoving it in there and it's working really well. I'm really actually quite happy with the pour so far. Very, very good. That's one truck finished and I'd be surprised if we didn't get more than halfway finished already and that was not long at all. Very, very quick. All these guys that you see, normally we wouldn't have that many guys here, but they're all volunteers. They're all contractors from the area saw the job happening and they started to assemble and they want to help. And you can't see it, but in the window is Caden. He's the, the handicapped child that this is being made for. And he's sitting in the window watching us place concrete, which is really, really a good feeling. Really a good feeling. Wow, these guys are flying. I think we get them together and we do a group photo. They haven't worked together before. And look how good they're working. I'm gonna get my stuff together, we'll do that. Down there. Okay, Ben, go put your arm up on top of that concrete. Yeah, like that. Just... Yeah, there you go, that's a pose. Sebastian, you gotta get in front of that ladder. You guys can sit on this ledge here. Hey, uh, Crete Works. You can be up on the ledge here sitting down. Oh, man, what a guy. I'm segregating. Somebody needs to take his phone away from him. <laughs> okay. I'm going to click the camera and then I've got five seconds to get down there. Yeah, and that way you guys will all be able to smile and then it'll take pictures. Here we go. Oh, you missed it. Okay. And I think we're done. Are we? Okay, walls are full, and my goodness, it was a smooth day. You get a lot of help. Actually, we had too many guys on site, but hey, they all wanted to work, so we put them to work. It was good. 
And what a great crew. It's, it's so much fun when everybody works together and you got unity on site, which is what we had. And we didn't even have to tell people what to do. It was everybody worked together and they sort of saw ahead what was gonna be needed. The consolidation went flawless. It was beautifully done. I was really satisfied with the end result and really good quality concrete, that helps. Anytime you have good quality concrete, it makes the whole job go really smooth and that's what we had on this site. Even with the helix in, helix slows the concrete down a little bit. It doesn't flow as well in the wall, but it still, it filled up really well. I was really happy with it. So that finishes that. Now they can let that sit and they have a good foundation for all their rock work. And that's what's gonna happen in the next video is you're gonna see shotcrete go up against the wall. They'll put wire lath on, shotcrete, and they'll start forming all their rock work. And you'll be really impressed with that. So look forward to that in the next video. We'll see you then.